What's up guys, Mike Lewis here, and welcome to the Mike Lewis Podcast. If you guys want to keep up with me on social media, you can follow me on Instagram at Mike Lewis Official, and you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Lou 52 It's where most of my updates come. If you're enjoying my content, give me a like and a subscribe. And without further ado, let's just dive right into this episode. All right, welcome back, Tyree. What's going on, man? All right, what's good, bro? How you doing? I'm doing good. It's just a long time coming, no? Yeah, it's been a while. What was I? What was I like your second person, third person? Oh, dude, you were one of the the uh, very first people. I was still very green at that time. We've been wanting to make this thing happen for a minute now. Yeah, uh, you did. You, you did your thing for being green, man. So I mean, it's it's an honor to be back. Yeah, for sure. What have, what have you been up to uh, this past, uh, since we last spoke, and I guess, well, actually, we spoke, we speak often for those that don't know. I mean, aside from, like, myself and the Lord above, I feel like any significant updates, you're, like, the third person to know about it. Oh, man, I, no, seriously, I'm happy to see you grow and to see the strides that you've made, man. You, you've definitely, like, so you was never, you was never terrible, you was never bad, man, but you've definitely seen not only the improvement, but, like, your reach uh, just expand. I'm very, very proud of you. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate that. But like, um, what I was getting at, like, what about like from like a general basis? Like, what have you been up to, um, outside of like obviously, you know, when we last spoken, uh, through the podcast? Like, you've been up to anything uh, spectacular at all over the last year or so? Or, uh, yeah, um, I believed when we last spoke, I actually didn't have uh, my con- my company actually, uh, like legit going, but. I'm the owner of Total Body Ascension Personal Training. Uh, I've been doing that since uh, I've been a personal trainer since 2013, but I've owned my own business since, uh, say, July of last year, 2020. Uh, it's it's kind of an uphill battle doing a personal training company in the middle of a uh, coronavirus pandemic. But, you know, I've seen some success. Um, let's see. I've done that. I've, I've done some modeling, uh, did a couple movies. So. Oh shit! Wait, so the so those the modelings and the um, the movies those were like after uh, we spoke. Uh yeah, I believe uh, cause I, I um, I did Born a Champion. Well, the first movie was before we spoke. I think I told you that. I think I said it as a joke, but I legitimately was blown up in the courtroom in Batman Superman. That was no joke. Yeah. Uh, but I was in a movie called Born a Champion with uh Sean Patrick Flannery. Uh, it's actually on Amazon Prime right now. I got choked out pretty quick. It was nice. Um. Hey, they say grab the man and get choked out. So I grabbed the man and got choked out. Was, All right, cool. Um, and the modeling has actually taken off pretty significantly uh, over the last uh, three to four months. Um, I, it, I would say that I'm modeling. I'm not a model because I'm not. I don't. I don't have a contract yet. Yet. <laughs> so you know, until I, until I, until, until you, until you paying bills with something, and you can't call yourself that. Right. So I'm still a personal trainer slash 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 so yeah i've been peeping that they got that little runway thing going you got you uh in that godfather type look yeah yeah you know i had to remind people i I remind myself how good i look in a suit and i do look (laughs) fantastic in a suit i do and any of those opportunities like did you actively like i don't know maybe was there an audition or they notice you from like maybe your time on tv no uh none of the uh None of my modeling gigs, anyone has ever said anything to me about my time on reality TV. And if they did, if they did notice it, I don't think they brought it up. But no, I don't think I've, there's been no connection to, from that. I've just, just gone out and auditioned. Was well, same thing with the movies? Yeah. Uh, well, the uh, Born a Champion, I was actually working on a short film um, um, that uh i'll send to I'll, I'll actually send you it after we get done uh but it was a little short little homemade thing and uh some ca- casting crew was looking for some extras and looking for someone to be in and they hit me up so that was reached oh, out wow. where, where does that stack up uh compared to the batman and uh, superman role well i mean batman superman like you didn't you I, you didn't see me in any way shape or form uh mm-hmm. And on board, you just knew I, I just you just knew I was in the back getting blown up by a guy in a wheelchair. Yeah, uh, we're born a champion. Like you know, my face is my face, and I'm there. Like it's, it's I'm not Tyree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but um, like I feel like the more I do this kind of things, you know, the more I can build up a little bit better of a, of a resume and keep moving towards it. 
I actually want to fight The Rock. I want I would Rock come whoop my ass in a movie, bro. Like please, I don't. It could be a it could be a ten second fight. I I will gladly take a rock bottom from the People's Champion in a movie. Trust and believe. I have no shame in that at all. All right, come whoop my ass. I'll let him put the people's elbow on me. I don't care. Just make it. Just make it happen. Pay me to get my ass whooped, Rock. Please pay me. In fact, if you're still looking for extras for Black Adam, I'm on. Let me know. <laughs> will Batista suffice? If uh, maybe you got an opportunity to take someone from him, bro. Hell yeah, man. I was, bro. I'm Batista. He's. It's funny because like I, you know I told you before we you know I yeah. he you know real power, but he, he's lost some size. I think he still got his speed though, bro. Uh, and don't man, Batista might be on a different level when it comes to acting, though, man. I mean, you know, I, it's, not, it's no diss on the Rock at all, but like you, like the roles that Batista takes is uh, like he's legitimately like in that craft. Whereas the Rock, and you know, all love to him, but the like, it, it always seemed like the Rock is always playing like some version of himself. Um, where Batista, I've seen him go through the whole old man makeup. I've seen him in buddy comedies. I've seen him in you know dramas. It's like honestly, I might have to get I might have to get my shit together before I try to uh, try to work with Batista on some acting acting shit. But if he wants to whip my ass in the movie too, please please power bomb me, Batista. Please, please, no, please. yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, to echo what you said, I mean, it feels like almost when The Rock's playing a role in a movie, you know, no slight to him, of course, but, like, it almost feels like when he's there, it's almost as if it's, like, his his gimmick that he's playing out, you know what I mean? Whereas, like, when Batista's acting out in a movie, it's almost like you don't even realize that he comes from WWE, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's really authentic and, like, genuine, I feel like, more so than maybe The Rock's roles, in my opinion, at least. Yeah, yeah. I think but Batista's a hell of an actor. Oh, man, he's fantastic. He's absolutely fantastic, man. He really is. Yeah, so uh, you and I were talking earlier about uh, a dream that you wanted to talk about uh, <laughs> on here. What what were you implying with that? Okay, so, uh, so you know, um, uh, I've been asked uh, to do All-Stars, like, all three times. Um, first time, second time, and in, uh, in this upcoming one that they're, they're just casting for. And, you know... I've either turned it down or wasn't able to do it and then turned it down anyway. Um, and a lot of that stems from, you know, as we previously talked, uh, you know, how I feel like I was treated and portrayed uh, the last time I was, you know, I was on an outing with uh, Butum and Murray Studios or Productions or however you want to say it. Um, but I keep having these dreams, bro. And like this one this morning was kind of crazy. Um, like a couple of days ago, I... I had a dream that I was in Titans Tower, like Team Titans Tower, like, you know, but like there was a lot of like reality TV cast there. Like Johnny was there. Uh, Dick Grayson, Nightwing was actually teaching a fight, uh, was teaching a fighting class. And it was like a, it was like a, it was like an audition. And, you know, I made it past like several uh, other realities. And there's was a couple of bland people. I don't, I, I just know there was reality TV. I don't know them by name, but I know they were, they've been on reality TV. And then today, like I fell asleep, you know, cause I wake up super early as a trainer and I didn't have to have my 5 a.m. client today. But I fell asleep again after, you know, waking up at three. And like, I had a dream that I was, it wasn't necessarily a challenge or it wasn't a mission, but it was something that TJ asked us to do. Um, it was kind of a puzzle, and something happened. Like I couldn't, I couldn't breathe, and I ended up having to, you know, go to the restroom, and I ended up having a conversation with Yes, you know, and it kind of got me back to, you know, and we kind of got back on the same page, and we went out and we killed this shit, and I woke up and like, all right, you know, I might be, I might be taking looking at this opportunity at the wrong way. Um, and maybe if the opportunity comes again, I should go ahead and just do it. So, wow. So it's almost like, uh, not a manifestation, but almost like, uh, ear, ear, eerie foreshadow is what I'm getting yeah. at. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully it's not a foreshadow of me losing again. I'm about tired of that shit, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it just seems like, you know, for all of my reservations that I've had against, uh, you know, f for doing the show or kind of getting back in the mix of things, you know, maybe I should, I shouldn't lead with those reservations. Maybe I should have those, you know, in the back of the head and, you know, learn from them. 
but maybe I shouldn't lead with those and like keep that as the reason why I don't do the show. Um, so, you know, if all stars four, you know, gets casted and, you know, they call me up, you know, I'm definitely going to go, I think I'm going to go ahead and, you know, ask for that slide. I'm probably gonna have to scrub my uh, social media clean though. I'm probably gonna have to delete. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, no, um, if, say, if, like, you know, you were to, like, accept that call, like, what do you feel like, in your mind, like, would be maybe the main component to want you to come back? Because, you know, obviously, we just spoke about this dream now, but when you and I were, you know, a few days ago, you know, just chatting it up, it seemed like uh, you maybe had some mixed feelings on it. What maybe now might sway Well, no, your- I still have mixed feelings, but make no mistake, I still have mixed feelings. Um, I'm, I'm never going to back down from how I feel about how I was shown on Rivals 2 and how I feel like production showed me what they thought of me uh, on Rivals 2 because, you know, I feel like my image was destroyed and then, you know, I just didn't get any reach out. There was no calls. There was no nothing. Um, and, and in an obvious situation where, and not to bring up, you know, old boy again, but in an obvious situation where someone disrespected the integrity of the game and you would usually see TJ, you know, kind of get on their ass for it. It was very clear that wasn't going to happen. I mean, the man even admitted it in an interview and there was still no, you know, reach out or anything. So it was pretty much, this is what we think of you. And this is how we are going to portray you. So that's always going to be in the back of my head. And I'm always going to feel a certain type of way about that. And honestly, I'm always going to have a chip on my shoulder a little bit about that. Um, but I feel like there's uh, there's an opportunity for me to perform better. Um, then, and I don't want to include Rivals 2 because I was ready to go in Rivals 2. So, you know, on my previous ones then you know, maybe I wasn't prepared for you know, there's a couple of times I showed up. I wasn't ready. Gauntlet three. I was not ready. You know, uh, Island, I screwed up. I screwed myself over and rivals one. I lost that for my squad. Um, whether asthma or not, I took the L on that. No problem. I don't have a problem with, you know, admitting when I take an L, if I take an L. Um, but this time now it's like, you know, I want to get out there and, you know, if I do get out there and, you know, I want to hit a final. I want to hit a final. I want to be on the top of that mountain, you know, and no one thinks I can do it. And that's fine because no one thinks everything I can do it. So the only person I really have to prove anything to is me. I don't really care about anyone else's opinion. I don't, you know, I think, and I think I uh, might've told this to you before uh, in our earlier chats, you know, one of my reasons why I was kind of apprehensive about doing the show is because it was kind of built up as some kind of redemption art. And the fact of the matter is, I mean, who the fuck do I need to be redeemed in? And whose eyes do I need to be redeemed in front of? I'm refuse to, I refuse to accept that as you know some kind of a viable reason on why this is why I should be able to get back on the show. Oh, you'll get a chance to redeem yourself in front of the fans. The fans gonna call me all type of ignorant names and racist shit. You know what I mean? You get a chance to redeem yourself in front of the cast members. All right, I got maybe three legitimate friends. When it comes to the cast members, you know, I mean, I'm happy to meet people and maybe form new relationships and maybe try again. But the fact of the matter is, you know, they've never they don't pay my bills and I don't pay theirs. You know, oh, you get to get redeemed in the eyes of production. Honestly, production needs to be redeemed in my eyes. And that's I'm not always going to stand on that. I'm never going to go away from that. But for me, me personally, I want to win. I want to win. I want to win the challenge. And I don't mean a mission. I want to win the challenge. So that's the motivation. And also, you know, um, you know, I got a kid and she's getting of age, you know, where she's, you know, she's exploring the Internet and, you know, people can start having conversations with her. She's only five now, but she's getting up in age where, you know, a conversation might be had when, you know, well, this is what your daddy did and this is how they made your daddy look. And this is how your daddy looked. And it's like, you know, you know, maybe I can offer something uh, on the positive side of that as well i don't really think that should only have to come or that opportunity should only have to come through going on all stars and i have a 100 plan on 100 100 percent plan on uh making my own opportunities in order to fix that and i have but you know there's more i can do and there's more that i want to do and there's like i said there is a little a little bit of that saying pride into me that wants to get out there and i kind of want to bust some heads you know as you know politely and as respectfully as possible yeah no yeah dude that's seriously like uh i didn't even think about that until you just brought it up like one of the big uh motivations you know obviously you just mentioned about like your daughter getting up there in age you know like i've had uh you know several of my other past guests on here have specifically wanted to do it like 
and talk about this stuff because they want when their kids grow up this to be the last thing they see of them and that's like a really big uh motivation point i feel like you brought up i feel like if you were to go back on all stars say you know you do well say you make a final or something of that nature have a good show and i mean then that's potentially the last thing that is uh, out there of you you know what i'm saying like at the end of the day though um it is ultimately your decision how you feel of course but i mean what you just said i mean i couldn't think of a uh, better redemption you know yeah mm-hmm. was there anything like do you feel like stood out to you in particularly like you mentioned just rivals too a moment ago like what about um anything else did anything else stick out to you maybe portrayal wise or edit wise that you didn't like um well i before i say anything about that i'm i'm i will i've always said straight up i mean if i've if they filmed me doing some dumb shit or doing some crazy ass shit or doing some wild shit then you know god damn it it was me all right you know i have a I, i've been prone to react before responding to certain shit and honestly if you piss me off properly i'm going to want to fight you all right but i always felt like i was never allowed to be shown outside of either being angry or being a loser on the show you know even times where like during like the prank wars and stuff like you know where i was involved in the prank wars and you know but they, they would you know it always be centered around johnny or ct and that's fine man because you know they're using the heads of that shit then but it's like Damn, girl, you can't show me laughing with anyone. You can't show me. You can't show me getting along with anyone. Like that's it. Like all, all I, all you, all I am to you is just a ball of anger and a guy who can't get it done. Was like that's insane. You know, um, I kind of feel like exes. They took uh, on Battle of the Exes. They took liberty, took liberties with uh, me and my partner when the reality uh, and and how our relationship was. And, you know, and let me pause this real quick. I have no ill will towards Jasmine in any way, shape or form now. I mean, she's a mother of two. She's, you know, I have no ill will towards her. I hope she's happy. I'm sure she's very, very happy. And when I mention her, I only mention about uh, my time with her during that time. All right. You know, from what I've seen, you know, she's grown as just as much as I've grown. And I wish her all the best in the world. But back then, you know, they you know, they, they portrayed me like I was some lovesick puppy over here. And it was like, you guys were fucking tripping, you know? And, and, and it was like, it, it is because she was more popular and, you know, you know, there was, there were certain things that she, and once again, not the bachelor, but there were certain things that she said in order to make sure she got noticed on the show and make sure she continued to get noticed on the show. And once I realized that half of my formula of getting on camera was just me being angry or just me being, you know, reactive to people pissing me off, you know, I tried to change the formula. Uh, whereas uh, someone who quote unquote said they wanted to be the challenge whore, you know, was able to, you know, be, be progress and showed in and this light. So they made me look like I was some lovesick puppy. Like I'm some ugly ass motherfucker. like, listen, man, I'm a lot handsome now than I, what I was, but I've never been ugly. Y'all got me fucked up. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, and, and once again on X's, I feel like a lot of, uh, you know, probably some of the best relationships I've made on that, uh, within the show was on X's. And I feel like I wasn't ever shown to be in that way. You know, uh, you know, I think me and CT got real close during that time. And, you know, they kind of painted it like me and CT never talked, even though I was up with that man, you know, every night, you know, me and DM, that's when, you know, me and DM officially really got cool and God bless her soul. Um, you know, I felt like there was a lot of, I feel like there was a lot of times where a more accurate portrayal that would have included something more than just me just being angry could have been shown. And I understand maybe the challenge ain't for that, but it's like, you know, it seems like everyone else kind of got that opportunity. But I also understand, hey, man, like, you know, the conquerors, the winners, you know, write the history books too. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it feels like uh, X's was the one that really stood out to me the most in terms of, like, the portrayal because, like, you know, like, you see, like, these Instagram photos floating around of, like, you, CT, Mark, and uh, Leroy kind of looking like the X-Men, you know what I mean? And then, oh, the like, boy band picture? Yeah. And then... Of course, man, baby. It was out there. And then on the show... You have like uh, you're they're cutting to uh, confessionals or like scenes of like maybe Paula and then Emily saying like, you know, like beefing with you in a way. You know what I mean? Like, oh, Tyree's wiling out or, you know, and it shows you getting angry. 
Like, yeah. were, was was that the case on X's? Like, were the, were the girls, like, pissed off at you for some reason? or? Well, on X, from what I remember on X's, uh, the girls were, some of the girls were a little upset about, uh, you know, me and Jasmine's probably most infamous argument, um, which pretty much was me shitting on her for about 10 minutes. Um, and, I, you know, some words were used that I wouldn't usually you know, I probably usually wouldn't use in regards to women. And maybe that was what upset them. And, you know, there's also like there's I have a I have a low tolerance for people talking stupid to me. I'm sorry. I, I just I don't have the patience for that. And, you know, I feel like a few times, you know, that was tried and I'm not going to tolerate it just because you're you've been on the show or your name is who your name is and anything like that. But to be fair, I don't really have a problem you know, I never really had a problem with Paula, honestly. Um, uh, and Emily Strom, I'm not going to lie. I don't think me and her ever really liked each other. And I don't, I, I'm not, I don't know how, I, I hope she's doing the belt well now, but I don't, you know, it is what it is. You know, I have, I have other beef with her that doesn't need to be brought up right now, but you know, I mean, she knows what she did and it involves like black brown pudding and a, a hat, you know, um, but me, like me and her, never really got along anyway. So it's, I mean, it is what it is. Some people you ju- you just don't get along with, and that's okay. I don't have any ill will towards them. So, did they give you like the option to kick Jasmine off, like when she like I think she hit you in that one scene during that fight? Um, I yes, but no. Like it felt, I I, I felt like if you know, it was it was kind of it was kind of laid out that if I wanted to send her home, I could have sent her home. But if I did send her home, I was probably going home too, you know, because from my understanding, uh, you know, in uh, Battle of the Exes, like uh, the only other person they probably could have brought up, like on that situation, was Brooke, and Brooke wasn't trying to do it at that time. So I was pretty much essentially shooting myself in the foot. Also, she didn't really hit me anyway, so it was like it was it would be respectfully it'd be like a fly hitting a wall. So it was like I, ain't, yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna trip about that. I always. You know, she she said she told me why she acted the way she did during that time. I don't believe that was really the reason. But, you know, I always kind of felt that she was stunting on some I'm better than you. And you know, she really was not, not at least not during that season, because during that season, anytime we ever got close to winning, it was because of me. All right. And that was a, and I guess that was the other thing that kind of made me that kind of irked me a little bit. It was like, yo, I've I've dropped the ball on these challenges before, bro. And that's OK. You know, I've lost. I've taken a couple L's, but damn, you don't even show me, you don't even show when I'm improving. Like you, you don't even, we can't even, I can't even get a gimme, you know? Yeah. I, you know, the first challenge I think we did, you know, we, they, I feel like they should manipulated the camera to look like, you know, cause it was, I think it was me and Jasmine versus uh, Wes and Mandy during that time. I think they manipulated the camera and to make it look like, you know, it was closer than it was. And the fact that it is me and Jasmine smoked them. Me and Jasmine was like half a second from being in the final round. Or excuse me, half an inch from being in the final round. No joke. All right. You know, there was a, you know, in the uh, the the launch campaign, the one where they was catapulting us off, that dangerous ass mission, where they was catapulting us off into a, you know, uh, into the, into the, uh, into the water, excuse me. We was like 40 feet up, you know. Like me and Jasmine almost like me and Jasmine was one wrong question. When I messed up, when I uh, got the wrong answer between uh, it was a uh, Van who's who's a famous I believe it was a who's a famous uh, artist who cut off his ear, and I said Picasso instead of Van said Van Gogh. If I had said Van Gogh, me and Jasmine was in the finals. Yeah, was, and it's like, like bro, like <laughs> like it's like they, damn. I can't get a, I can't get a gimme. I can't get, I can't, I can't even get, hey man, yo, fam improved. No, nothing. It's just, it, it was just always shown to, you know, if I, unless you win or unless you're one of their, unless you're one of their people or one of their favorites, man, if you don't win, like you don't, there's no progress shown about you. And I guess that was always my issue too. It was like, well, damn dude. I mean, I've, I'll lose. I've lost. I've lost first a few times. It is what it is. But, you know, I also know when I went out there and I bust ass. I also know when I've gone out there and I've shown them had a much better performance and I feel like, you know, instead of like just keeping me in this box, maybe you could just show, Hey bro, no fam did better. You know, uh, he, I think he's starting to understand the concept of these. Let's give him back so we can actually see him win. All right. I say again, rivals two is probably my best in shape situation 
Uh, and had I got called back after that, you know, I would have came back even in even better shape, both physically and mentally. Um, but that opportunity was, you know, taken away. I almost thought I was banned for a quick second. It was, it was kind of rough. It was like, damn, dude, this is like, you guys, you know, you guys show me looking like an asshole. And then I just don't get called for five or six years. All right. That works, I guess. All right. Yeah. It, it looked like those last two seasons of yours, like there was like a glaring, uh, improvement. You know what I mean? Like, I can't even pinpoint like on your last two seasons, you effing up, you know what I mean? Like, and aesthetically even too like you came into those two seasons like each passing season like you were gradually getting in like performance better shape but like not only that like just physically better shape too it almost felt like it was building up you know what i mean like so would you say that would you say that like there's like a misconception when it comes to like when people look back at uh you know maybe you're challenge career from like a competitive standpoint because i'll be honest you know on surface level maybe the numbers don't pop out but if you really yeah, like no, if mean, you really I've, analyze I've the thing before, bro like i mean statistically man if you if you put like, if you put the wins and losses together man i mean you know i perform well on daily missions man but your elimination uh, when it comes to elimination record bro you know i ain't, i've taken the l you know whether it's been my fault or you know whether it's been you know, uh, you know fighting during asthma it, it is what it is i've lost that's fine. That's okay. And I'm saying it's fine. Okay. On some, you know, I'm not going to sit there and pretend like it didn't happen. I'm not pretending. I'm not going to sit there and say it was someone else's fault. That's not how I operate. Um, but yeah, man, once you, I think after the Island is when I really, things really kind of kicked in, um, where I felt like, you know, maybe I, maybe I've been approaching these things the wrong way. You know, I tried to, you know, up the cardio. Cause I mean, a lot of this is more, a lot of this is running. A lot of this is movement. A lot of this is agility. You know, that wasn't something that I was really focusing on, you know, mentally, you know, I tried to go back and, you know, you know, watch the shows, prepare for it. And, you know, even just kind of work on my own temper and my own temperament, because, you know, as I've said before, I do have a temper. I'm not going to sit there and lie to you. Um, you know, I kind of felt like if, you know, one more, one more chance at the rivals and like, especially on a duel or something like that, man, my God, Oh my God! If they would have gave me a duel after Rivals too, bro. Oh my goodness, bro! I was ready to go, but you know that wasn't in the cards, and you know I always felt like it should have been. But I, I, I definitely the more challenges I did, the more I respected the prep work needed to go into the challenges. Yeah. Do Do you feel like if you accept the uh, call, if it comes for All Stars Four, you're going to take a Rivals Two approach in terms of like your training regimen, or? Uh, yeah, I've already, uh, I'm already pretty decent on my diet. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not necessarily in uh, a keto style, uh, but you know, I definitely have a low carb, low fat, no fast food, no sugar style diet right now, and you know, I have people that I've form bond with throughout my uh, personal training career that, you know, when it's time, you know, I got, you know, I got one guy who uh, did a uh, Ninja Warrior. I got another guy who's a champion Muay Thai fighter. I got another guy uh, who's a pro boxer. I got another guy who's a pro jujitsu wrestler, a ju pro jujitsu practitioner. I got another person who, uh, who just, I've, I've trained and become a trainer himself. And so, you know, I have a team ready for when it's actually time to go, but I have a team ready for when it's time to go, whether I get on the challenge or not, because once again, I want to fight the rock in the movie and, you know, I got to be ready to go for something like that. And just those opportunities keep popping up and you got to, you know, what's the, what's the, what's the word they say? Um, uh, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Yeah. Do, do you feel like you came up in like a dark era of the challenge? I've seen a lot of people fan wise refer to that era that you were in as like the dark era of the challenge with like kind of everything that uh, went on and kind of the vibe of the show. Would you say so? Did it uh, feel like that? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I do. I feel like, um, you know, especially compared to today's, not only just the challenge, but today's, um, today's uh, uh, entertainment society that's been influenced by reality TV. Like, you know, now every major production company has a reality subsection that, you know, is making them millions upon billions of dollars, you know? And, you know, during the time I was in, I was kind of on the show and back in my heyday, makes me sound so old, I hate saying that. But, 
but back in back in my day, um, you know, if you didn't assimilate with the dominant culture, then you probably wasn't getting too far on that show. If you didn't, if you didn't kind of step in line with uh, people with people and the way they thought, then you you know you probably wasn't going to get too far. Where I feel nowadays, like that, it might be the same thing, but it's a different set of people. You know, like, you know, the more things change, the more things uh, stay the same. Um, when I was going up, when I was in the show and when I was allowed to be on the show and I had those opportunities, you know, I, I felt like I had to deal with blatant racism from castmates and even uh, aversive racism from uh, producers. Whereas now, you know, it seems like they're on this inclusivity t- uh, kind of tick and, they, you know, that kind of thing isn't, you know, isn't tolerated, which I appreciate. But it's like, OK, so. You you gonna call back the people who had to go through all that bullshit? Y'all y'all gonna y'all gonna y'all gonna give an opportunity to the people who had to go through all that bullshit when when it's pretty much if you weren't if you weren't the white frat boy jock, you know, you know you weren't looked at as a side character or you wasn't looked at as side piece. Uh, you know, once again, not really trying to complain. I you know I love the opportunities I've been given, but I definitely see a difference in in how things have been done and how things are being done now. And, you know, I think everyone who had to go through those trenches should be able to get back on, you know, and be able to take advantage of this new inclusive, you know, environment. Yeah, it's very uh, WWE-esque, you know, two things we could kind of go hand in hand with in terms of like the challenge eras, you know what I mean? Like the era before you came up, you know, in the challenge, like, which I would put your first season of the challenge was Inferno 3. Which I believe was two seasons after Fresh Meat, the first Fresh Meat. I'd say before Fresh Meat, you would call it like the golden era of the challenge. Whereas, like, I would probably compare that to the, uh, you know, the Hulk Hogan, Roddy Piper days of like WWE. Whereas, like, you know, from your time on the show, probably from like Inferno three to like maybe maybe rivals two around that time period would kind of be like the attitude era in a way, you know? Yeah. And yeah. now we look at the challenge and it's almost similar to how WWE operates yeah. right now. It's almost like a PG. Yeah, yeah. Very PG era, you know? Um, one of the biggest things though, obviously that transpired from your season, you know, since we're on the topic was obviously the whole situation with uh, Davis. We know um, it's resolved and you guys are on great terms today, but how do you feel about like when it took place at the time? Cause obviously, you know, we watch a show and it's documented in all your lives, like throughout your time on the show, but we only see the shortened version. You know what I mean? Like only half of that clip probably is going to make it onto the, you know, screen. Yeah. How do you how do you feel like like maybe your cast members like treated that situation? Do you feel like they kind of just like swept it under the rug and like let it diffuse itself? Yes, uh, but I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say swept it under the rug uh, because Davis got ghosted by most of the cast there after that. Like you know, a lot of people a lot of people in the cast kind of like you know let him kind of get his like have his own kind of space and we all kind of chilled out. I feel like they showed uh, me and him getting over it a little too soon because it was nowhere near that quick. It took a it took a couple of weeks to about a month before me and him got on a, you know, a better page to where we, you know, kind of go up, got over that. Uh, I'm also not going to, you know, while he was wrong, you know, I've definitely said some wrong things to Davis too. I said some wrong things to Davis too during that time, not exactly during that exact uh, situation, but you know, there was a time before we got into it again and we, we definitely let both barrels go. So, you know, I hold no ill will towards their, uh, Davis at all, man. And, you know, I think he, you know, I think he went through, I don't want to say rehabilitation or nothing like that, because I don't think he, he really did that. I think he knew that he was screwing up from a drunken standpoint, but I also know that I was drunk too that night, and I also picked the fight with him because I was drunk and because of what I heard at the time. So, you know, honestly, I'm a, I, I'm a nice guy, but I'm a big, scary-ass-looking motherfucker. I mean, sometimes, you know, it is what it is. If I scare if I scare, if I if you scared of me, you probably gonna say some wild shit, and you drunk too. Like, all right, man. So it's like I don't, I don't really you know hold too much grudge for that, too much, you know, anymore. And love the guy to death. In fact, I'm listening to his new song. He got a new like two, three new songs out right now. He's been killing it. Yeah, he he almost Davis seems like nowadays he's gone through like almost like a second wind. You know what I mean? Like he's like oh, almost <laughs> just like one of the most zen, like just chill down people that I've like spoken to from the show. From my understanding, and uh, from what I, last time I talked to him, he's been he's been sober for a pretty long time too. So, yeah, yeah. So props to him on that. Yeah, 
Um, so you guys had that situation, and of course, like you know, I would say, and I think most people would agree that you probably handled that like very good in comparison to maybe most people would handle that situation. Did you feel like it didn't even cross? <laughs> I, there was a moment where, where if Jim didn't get in the middle of him, I was going to bash his head. And the moment he touched my face, I was going to—I was ready to beat his ass. The but moment they didn't I did show that, there, right? Yeah, they did. They there's did a show. Portion, there's a portion where I'm sitting out uh, on our porch, um, and he comes out wilding, and he grabs my face. And the moment I go to pull my when I go to pull myself up, I'm going to punch him in the mouth. There was no uh, there's no more talking after that. But Jim Johnson, the uh, uh, you know, head head guy at the time, you know, got in the middle of us, mm. and that's the you know, that's really why. So there really wasn't, you know, uh, I can't take credit for handling that in a better way. I had every intention of whooping his ass after that. That was that was the moment he touched me. That was in it. Now, the, I think the other reason why is because, and you know, you know, this is the magic of production. Davis said that to other roommates, which was then told me. He actually never said that to my face, which I think that would have been a completely different story. You know, yeah. once again, I revisit that. But yeah, that's a you know, it's a it's a real big story between someone telling me that you call me a nigger and you call me a nigger to my face. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. I've been called a nigger to my face in Omaha, Nebraska before, and they've gotten the shit beat out of them for me. That's not something I really fuck with. Um, you know, there was another. There was only one other time. You know, I actually had to eat it because. You know, uh, one of the more popular people on the show said it as a joke, and I brought it to uh, to a producer, and I was pretty much to uh, told that there was nothing I could be done about nothing that could be done about it. But at the same time, if I get physical on it, then I will lose the money that uh, you know I signed contractually. You know, so once again, you know, I've had my fair share of fuckery on the show, um, but no, it it got resolved because the, the, we took the time to resolve it. Um, and, you know, I still look at, you know, Davis is still my reality brother, no matter what, just because we've gone through a lot of shit after that, man. I mean, you know, uh, rivals won, man, we took a L man, but you know, you know, Davis was out there fighting. So it was like, I, I can't, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to stand by me in the trenches while we fighting, then I can't, I'm not going to keep holding this, you know, no five year grudge on you. So. Yeah, and you came to his like bat like pretty hard after uh, your first challenge together when CT hit him. Despite all that shit that you guys went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I tell you right now, I love CT to death, man. I was ready to bust his ass. That was, uh, I think. I think uh, the reason why me and CT didn't get into it that night was because Alvin got into it with CT that, that night. night. Yeah, what I, happened? I, because that was the same. That was the same night he bust. He hit Davis. So how did how did that situation between Alton and uh, CT go down? Uh, it it did not go down because CT ended up getting taken out that night, I believe. Uh, but did what did Alton do to CT? Alton, Alton was heading into the room to go deal with that, and he was going to deal with that before I was going to deal with that. But I was going to go deal with that because you know Davis is my roommate, and you know me and CT wasn't like cool cool at the at the way we were you know uh, you know around like maybe rivals two or you know exes or shit. So. Did you did you think that situation would have gotten physical between Alton and CT? Uh, the way Alton was talking, yeah, Alton was had every intention of getting it physical. Wow, so. wow, that's crazy. What did you think about that whole situation, like being in that house, like as you know everything unfolded? You know, it's kind of one of those scenarios where you didn't really know what to believe, but you you knew where your loyalties lied, and that's where you had to go with. Um, you know, there was. Uh, on one side, you know, someone said something along the lines of, uh, you know, Davis inappropriately approaching CT or touching CT. And then it was, there was someone else said something along the lines of CT, uh, you know, fucking with Davis. And it's like, you've, you know, no one really knew. You just knew at that time, you know, Davis was the guy that I went through the trenches with on my own show. And, you know, when it, when it's, you know, especially your first time out, you're going to stick with your castmates before you stick with anyone else. So. Yeah, it's kind of one of those situations, you know, obviously Davis told the story of what went on, you know, on here like a few months ago, but CT, yeah. of course, has his own uh, version, but um, it's one of those things, like, we're probably not going to know, like, what really happened, it's like one word against the other, you know, I don't think there's any footage of it, so it's one of those things that's just going to go to go to die, essentially. Yeah, yeah. 
But uh, speaking of last topic of Davis, because it's actually kind of correlates since, you know, you have two of your other roommates from Denver that seemingly went off the grid. But it's kind of funny. I like the timing was like weeks apart. Davis linked up with uh, Alex and then you were uh, linking up with Steven. Yeah. yeah. It's actually kind of like crazy uh, timing since like nobody's essentially heard from Steven and uh, Alex for like a really long time, I would say. Yeah, Alex. uh Alex definitely decided after uh, what challenge did I do with him? Was it the gauntlet? Gauntlet, after the gauntlet three, three yeah. that he was done with the show in any way, shape, or form. And I don't know if it was, you know, the politics behind the challenge or whatnot, but he was done. Like so, that was when you didn't see Alex again after that. Um, Stephen, <clears throat> I think Stephen wanted to do the challenges if he was asked. But Stephen ended up going into more of a uh, end up going into a situation where, you know, his job said you can either work at this job and become successful at this job or you can chase reality TV dreams. And he chose the job. And I think he made the right decision because, you know, you know, Stephen is, you know, not only involved with the uh, uh, the education council in Sacramento, but he's also, you know, has his own uh, marketing business, too. So, you know, Stephen is doing what he needs to do. In fact, a lot of I would say a lot of my cast, both all of my castmates have gone on to be pretty successful. I'm very, very proud of them. Uh, uh, Jen was a uh, Jen. Might, I'm, I'm not sure if she is, but uh, she was at least the uh, regional manager of a huge, uh, you know, fitness change, uh, fitness change called P2P. She was killing it. You know, Coley is the president of the pro, uh, the pro bowler association. Uh, Brooke is a legitimate uh, psychiatrist and is doing fantastic work. Alex is a lawyer. You know, I told, said about Steven Davis is, you know, doing his music thing and I dabble in acting and personal training and I'm a personal trainer that dabbles in acting and modeling. I mean, we a lot of the good things that came out of our season, you know, so where I guess we can all appreciate, you know, what we went through. But, you know, there's really no I don't want to say there's no reason to look back, but, you know, there's we're always looking forward instead of, you know, looking on the horizon. So. Yeah, so it's pretty safe to say that we won't be getting a real world Denver homecoming. Probably not. There's a, I think there's about four of us that would be down to do it. Uh, I'm, I think Jen is a complete no. I don't think Jen is. I, I think Jen is completely done, um, and I think Alex is completely done. Uh, Coley might be down as long as it just, as long as it doesn't interfere with what she's doing. But like, yeah, they're, they're at least two of us, at least two of the group is completely out of it. So, yeah. They they haven't like asked yet, right? About that? No, no, I don't think oh. so. Yeah. Um. What about like post show, like after Denver wrapped? Like, how many like bar appearances potentially, or any speaking engagements did you uh, get? Oh yeah, I you know I had a good run when it came to uh, the club the club scenes and the uh, club events. I did a few uh, speaking tours with the Ugars. Um. I actually wouldn't mind doing a few more with them just because I have more things to speak about um, outside of just being on the show. Um, uh, I don't think I did as well as Jen did because Jen, you know, Jen was a girl, go to girl for that. Um, but I, I made enough money to be happy. Well, uh, I made enough money to not have a regular job for like three, four years after Denver. You got to tell that story. I don't know if you remember what I'm talking about, but I think it was when you were on an appearance with Wes. Oh my God! All right. <laughs> All right. I believe we were. Uh, this was uh, Arizona. Uh, yeah. West was West living out in Arizona, and you know, shout out to West. I always, always liked West. I really did. Always, he's always, I always thought he was the Doctor Doom of the challenge, but like, I always liked West. Um, West got me fucked up. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Let me let me say this properly. Alex and his boys at ASU got me fucked up, all right, drinking wise, all right, because I'm I'm a I'm I'm a, I'm a marijuana head. I am not a drinker in any way, shape, or form. I'm really not. So I was messed up, bro. All right, and I don't know if you know, but like at least back then, I had a I had a real bad habit about just peeing outside whenever the hell I wanted to pee outside, bro. I just if I needed to go. I was just gonna go. I was gonna go find a dark corner. If it wasn't a dark corner, if I had to go, I had to go. So that was about to happen. All right. And Wes rolls up and he grabs me by the shoulder while I'm like literally whipping out the main thing. Bro, what the fuck are you doing? Stop. Hey, bro, I got to pee, man. What are you talking about? Hey, bro, look, look, look. First and foremost, there's a cop right there. All right. You know what happens? This is verbatim. You know what happens if you get caught peeing outside in Arizona? 
you become a registered sex offender. All right. Put your shit up. Wait until we get into a place. <laughs> wait till we get inside and don't do that. All right. So Wes essentially saved me from going on the list. And I appreciate that, Wes. Good looking out, bro. Uh, because drunk Tyree is not a very rational Tyree. He's not. <laughs> is it? I've heard like Wes off the show is like really like uh, like quiet and like uh, I don't want to say nerdy, but like he's very like uh, sophisticated, talks about like politics mostly. Uh, I, I think people forget that Wes is from Kansas. Mm. And that, that, that should be all I all, all I should need to say. All right. Yeah. But, every, but all everything about Wes that I've ever seen about him has been genuine. All right. Mm. I've never seen Wes put on a front. I've never seen Wes pretend to be something that he ain't got to be. All right. Wes is himself. And if you don't like Wes is himself, then yeah, fuck you. And I respect yeah. that. I love that about Wes. Wes is, you know, for for, you know, you know, I think I, I, we we had a little tiff on rivals because I think because I, <laughs> I think I said something along the lines of, um, and, you know, because West West will play the mental games. But I said something along the lines of, yeah, I've been back. Uh, you know, I started doing cardio. Um, you know, I run like, uh, you know, I was running like two or three miles a day. You know, but I was still a little bit on the heavier side. And he asked me, well, you know, you know, this, you know, this is going to be a race. Right. It was like, OK, you a dick. But. You know, outside of that kind of shit, man, you know, Wes, you know, Wes will mess with you and see kind of see where your head's at. But Wes has always been decent to me, man, and I'm, I've always appreciated it. So, yeah. And, and Wes is a huge Slipknot fan, bro. I didn't realize he was a Slipknot. <laughs> I love Slipknot, bro. <laughs> I saw, bro, he put on, all, he was in the pictures, man, had on the goddamn shit with the mask and the, and, and, and the, uh, the Bray White uh, uniform shit. I was like, oh, let's go, bro. He was ready to go. He was, yeah, he chose into that shit. Also, he likes Tech Nine. You know how I many people I know that actually enjoy Tech Nine? Three. Wow. Me, Wes, and a chick. Really? Wow. Well, I mean, pretty good category to be in, huh? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Wes, I mean, he might be uh, gearing up for like some uh, All Star comeback. You see him lately? He's been looking uh, kind of yoked on his Instagram. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he has. But I, Wes also said that he's he has some other things in um he has some other things that he's working on and he's not he's probably not gonna do all stars. At least that's what he said. All right. Nehemiah said he wasn't gonna do all stars. You know, apparently he's doing all stars. So it's like, I, I don't. don't Wes, 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 Wes yeah. said I'm not going to do something because I have. The Wes says I'm not going to do something because I have things in the mix. This is usually because he has something. And, you know, I say this respectfully, but some things that are bigger and, uh, you know, have a bigger payday than, you know, something like the All-Stars. So if he says yeah. he's not going to do it, I kind of feel like he's not going to do it. Well, well, since we're on the topic of Wes, well, let's uh, let's bring up uh, someone, one of his counterparts that uh, kind of goes hand in hand with him. We'll talk about Kenny for a second, since uh, this is this is this has lived in like infamy. I don't know if we've ever gotten a scoop fully uh, on this situation but i gotta ask you what what happened on the gauntlet three with you and kenny we saw it in the trailer and then it oh. didn't quite didn't quite make the final cut what was uh what was the situation between you two on gauntlet three uh yeah, yeah. all right so of course you know whenever santucci pops up you know it's never you know sometimes the memories aren't great um Got nothing but love for him, the guy now. You know, I've actually seen what he's done with his gym, and I'm very, very impressed at what he's done as a gym owner. So before I say anything else, we say that. Um, but Gauntlet 3, Kenny was a douche. Um, there's really no other way to put that. Um, uh, the Kenny today isn't the Kenny that was back then. Um, and... I was going, I was planning on leaving. I was planning on going home uh, because I had an emergency at the time. Um, and I believe Kenny wanted me to uh, put myself up on the elimination block because Johnny was on the verge of going home. And I didn't want to do that because pretty much I didn't owe him any favors. I didn't owe any of them favors. I don't know you, I don't know you favors. I didn't know Johnny favors. Love Johnny at the time. I don't know Evan any favors, you know. So I'm not going to do that. So, you know, me and him had, you know, had a couple passing little shit before, you know, we wrestled once or twice and, you know, but we, we've talked to our fair share of shit. So it was building up. And I remember him saying, I remember like me walking past and he saying him saying some of the lines of lines of Tyree's dumbass won't take Johnny's spot. And I said, fuck you or something of that nature. 
and he said what and you know and you know when, when you said something like what it's because you're looking to fight so I, at that point it's like okay well fuck you we can go ahead and do this i want to whoop your ass anyway so i started heading over towards him and then i remember this very clearly because evan uh said uh, something along the lines of if you want to get to him you're going to get to me and so i told him i'll beat your stupid ass too and Brad was over there too, which irked me because me and Brad was was really decent. Me and Brad was the co-creators of the Half Daddies. Ask him what that is. Um, and <laughs> so it ended up being it ended up being a scenario where I'm preparing to fight Brad, Kenny, and Evan all at once by myself, and I'm literally and this is heavy Tyree. This is 285 chunky Tyree ready to fight all three of these mugs at the same time, and I'm juggernauting towards them. There's people trying to pull me back. And I think the only thing that snapped out of it is because I think, uh, I don't know if it was Tori or if it was who it was, but uh, uh, one of the girls got in the middle of it and someone thought I was going to push my way through a girl. And that's just not who I am. And it snapped me back. And but it was very clear that we could have thrown we could have thrown hands any any point in time during that shit. Um, as for why they didn't show it. I don't know. Um, I would have to say it would probably be something along the lines of. You know, uh, Kenny and Evan being a mo in a higher bracket and more popular than I am. And at that point, you know, three guys looking like they're getting ready to fight one dude. And the one dude is more act more ready to fight than the three guys makes them kind of look bad. You know, also, and I've, as I've said before, you know, I'm not I, I don't really feel like I was allowed to be shown in a light outside of being either super angry or, you know, losing. So I think anything that would kind of make me look like a like a hard motherfucker, make me look like a badass, is not really something they're going to really show either. So I don't know, but I feel like I feel like it definitely should have been involved because at the very least, at the very least, you know that would have been something on my resume, on the challenge resume that didn't include me losing or arguing with someone or you know something shit like that. You know it was like I right, well you know this uh, he's uh, he's crazy. He'll fight you. I will fight you. I don't give a fuck. I've done made it very very clear. You know if we got to throw hands, we got to throw hands. Yeah, I'll try to take the Martin Luther King route, but I'll switch over to Nat Turner real quick, real quick. So yeah, it it, it kind of seemed like uh, you were on the outskirts with those guys though, like for most of you know your time on the show. And do, why do you feel like that was? Like was that organically? Did that happen that way, or was that your intention? You just didn't maybe oh, get no. off. Those I, you know, honestly, before me, I think me and Kenny fell out on, over something that wasn't that had nothing to do with the show. Me and Kenny was cool as fuck, and I don't know if uh, I don't know if I ever told you, but when I was filming in Denver, uh, Johnny, Kenny, Evan, Mark Long, and uh, I always mess up her name, but uh, uh, uh. I can't say her name. Svetlana? Yes. Uh, all, all did a club appearance, and we snuck out. We snuck out to go meet him. I was like, you know, I'm not going to fucking stay in this house while these motherfuckers are. Like, these, these are the same. I was literally watching Johnny's fucking season while I was, um, was when I was at uh, the girl I was talking to house, like, like during my season. Like, I'm, meet, I'm going to meet Johnny fucking Banana. I'm going to meet Mark Long. You got me fucked up. Like, I snuck out, and we I got cool with him. Me and Kenny was cool until, like, a spring break where... I was rooming with Zach Mann, and, you know, I told Kenny that he could crash in the room with us, because I didn't have no problem with him crashing in the room. I ain't going to charge him. Crash on the floor. Crash on the couch. And Zach put an end to that shit. Zach dated that shit immediately. So, and it seemed like ever since then, like, we, like, we, we just had beef. And I don't know if that was it or exactly, but I know that was one of the catalysts. Also, you know, they... How can I put this? I am a person who you are not going to crack racial jokes on or joke crack racial jokes with. I'm going to join in pretend like that. If you want to call that racially sensitive, then call it what it is. But and, you know, that was kind of one of their fortes. You know, it was it was, you know, they would say things. And if you get upset, then it would be a sign of weakness. Like, no, man, you're not going to say no stupid shit to me like you black from the waist down. I'm not as a black man. I'm going to sit there and take that shit. You got me fucked up, you know. You know, this is kind of why, and I, you know, all love the Leroy, but this is kind of why Leroy ended up becoming the go-to black guy for the show because he made it very, very clear that he wasn't going to trip about shit like that. And, they, and then they had people like Adam King there, who was this much black anyway. So they, you know, so it was like they, he wasn't going to trip over jokes like that and stuff like that. I'm both my parents are black. Both my most of my grandparents are black. I am a black man proudly. 
don't fuck with me on no racial th- shit and think I'm going to sit there and take it and think that shit's funny. It's not funny to me. So I feel like once, excuse me, I feel like once, um, sorry, my phone about to die. I have to, about to pl- plug it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I felt like once it was seen that, you know, there are certain things that I'm not going to joke around or laugh about, Rick, you know, you know, it was taken as, oh, he takes himself too seriously and, you know, we can't be cool with him. And if that's the case, then, then so be it, you know. Yeah. Do you, do you know no, I don't think I, I don't think I ever I think every time I did a season with them, I tried to go in with a more open mind or excuse me, at least an open mind or try to wipe the slate clean because it doesn't make sense to go in there with a you know chip on your shoulder. I do all stars for I'm going there with a chip on my shoulder. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna be polite, I'm gonna be respectful, but I'm going there to win, I'm going there to bust people's ass. So mm. do, do you know why Zach didn't want Kenny Crash with you guys that night? I mean <laughs> Zach how can I put this? Zach was pulling bitches, so <laughs> I, I, I think he. I think it was really just a situation where you know, uh, you know, you know, there was it was kind of a threes a crowd kind of situation. Uh, I don't think it was any ill. I don't think he had any ill will against Kenny. I just I don't think he had wanted someone extra crash in the room. But you know, I didn't have no problem with it because at that time, me and Kenny was cool. I was like, oh, man, that's the homie. I'm gonna let him crash. I ain't tripping. But. Yeah, I get. I guess Kenny ended up having to come out of pocket, and like ever since then, we were not, we weren't as cool. Like we joke around, and every it's just crazy because like on paper, me and Kenny should actually be friends. I'm not even joking. Like it's funny. It's funny if you think about it. We like the same '80s rock music. We like pro wrestling. We both of us started watching wrestling back in the uh, back in the golden age. All right, we both can go through Bohemian rap, uh, Rhapsody at any point in time. You know, we we've had jokes and conversations about hair bands. It's, it's crazy. We. You know, we 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 both were fat at one time and have found and found our stride through fitness. So on paper, like honestly, me and Kenny should be cool. But at the same time, once again, like I'm not really rushing to be cool with, you know, like at least like back then the mentality that Kenny had. You know, like I said, nowadays, like from what I've seen, you know, he's become a gym leader. Like he has a great community with his gym. And I see him, you know, put on and I and I see uh the strength that his gym community pulls from him. All right. In fact, when I was working at Equinox, there was a there was a guy who actually knew Kenny, um, and, uh, that would come to my gym, and he was actually a, 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 a one of the CEOs of uh, Equinox, and he actually knew Kenny. He was like, hey, "Man, you know, I know Santucci. Yeah, man, I know Santucci. Cool." And they started to talk to him, tell him I say hello, man. I have no ill will towards the guy, man. I really don't. But back then, man, we could have fought we, at any point in time. We could throw hands. So it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you take outside circumstances that we obviously aren't going to get into, like outside of, you know, the equation, most likely if uh, the option was on the table, we'd probably get you and him on Rivals too, if I had to say. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't really feel like we, you know, we probably shouldn't get into that. But yeah, I, no. from, what I, from what I understood, it was supposed like if certain things didn't happen or certain, you know, shit didn't pop off, it was going to be me and Kenny. And uh, and Dunbar and Johnny, I think. Yeah, so, and then Dust, Dustin would have been with Frank. And Dustin would have been with Frank, yeah. So That would have been like, I mean, shit. I, I mean, we talked about it the first time, but like, honestly, like the pairing with you and Dunbar, like they legit had no on-screen interactions with you guys on any of your shows going into that. That was just... They they had that tiff they had that thing about the uh, the whole protein and the island, him getting the king, him getting the key... Uh, based off of him great grandfather then, and that's what they used for it. It was like, oh my god, come on! I'm still a little irked about that because on paper, me and Dunbar should have did damage. I mean, yeah, from a physical standpoint. From I mean, a you physical were... standpoint. No, honestly, from a physical standpoint and from a mental standpoint, Dunbar's not an idiot, bro. No, he's a smart Dunbar, guy. Dunbar's not dumb at all, bro. He's really not. You know, and physically, bro, like, bro, it, like, especially in a hall brawl situation. In a hall brawl situation, uh. Like hypothetically speaking, it was um, and I think I might have said it before, but the only really t- only two teams I actually like legitimately feared and said like maybe we don't want to go against them was uh Jordan and Marlin, and that was because of Marlin. You know, Marlin squats seven hundred pounds. Marlin is a former Division One football player. Marlin was going to be a problem with that, and Zach was just a fucking hoss. Like if there was any if there was any reality TV version of He Man, it was probably Zach. All right. And Trey was fast, you know, so that I mean, that one was kind of, you know, that one was a little iffy, too. But like anybody else, it was like, no, nah, we should we should took that. You know what I mean, did, 
Do, do you think like if you're episode one plea to kind of get the house to throw Johnny in against you guys, like, you know, Dunbar probably would have tried since he didn't want to lose to Johnny. I, I don't know. Did they actually, I don't know. I'm not even sure if they showed that. Did they show that? They didn't show Dunbar saying anything, but they just showed you trying to rally. You and CT were trying to rally the numbers to get, you know, to, cause you wanted to go up against Johnny and Frank. Yeah, you're like, it, was, awesome. it was like, Hey man, if, one, if I'm, one, first and foremost, I think we all know I have the worst luck in elimination, bro. All right. Yeah. And I damn sure don't have the greatest luck when it comes around one elimination. So it was like, hey, man, if, I, if there's a potential, I'm going to go home. I want to go against the king. And as and I've said this on paper, off paper, Johnny Banana's name is synonymous with the challenge, period. So if you if I got to go out first, I'm going to try to go out against the top dog. Also, Dunbar made it clear at that time that he was not really cool with Johnny. And I think that if Johnny would have got in, he wouldn't have wanted to lose to Johnny. But at the same time, and, you know, respect to Rob and respect to Derek, you know, you would think just in that kind of scenario, him being, him, uh, being from Ole Miss, me being from Nebraska and our, you know, our, uh, you know, uh, our, co- and our, co- uh, the history of our college football teams, you know, you wouldn't want to, you know, you don't want to lose in a competition of that to anybody. And you damn sure don't want to lose in a competition of that to, uh, respectfully Derek and Rob, you know, Rob is a beast and Derek is fast as fuck. But, you know, a dumb boy that was trying, that was an easy win for us, you know. You think you guys would have beat Johnny and Frank in that? Had he gone 100%? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Let me tell you, bro, Rob was 240 pounds, all right? And Rob was, and Rob gave me some issues, man. But I feel like, you know, at, when it came down to it, Rob was pretty contained, all right? Johnny is 185, solid muscle. Take nothing away from him. He's a swole 185 man. But there's a difference between... 185 pounds solid muscle and 240 pounds huge difference and at that time i was like uh 220 all right and i was pretty solid myself you know i still had you know i still had the you know a little, little, little pop of gut i did i ain't gonna front but you know me man and i mean frank was a, frank was a hoss too frank was uh, frank has really really strong legs i know i remember that frank was a frank it had these massive ass quads so it wouldn't i'm not saying it would have been easy but i think we could have won that for sure so. yeah i mean J- johnny i mean johnny has always been in good shape but i think that was the one exception like rivals too he wasn't like in uh you know his peak performance shape or something yeah. like that yeah. yeah um one thing that i want to close with on the from the gauntlet 2 perspective though i was kind of curious because we never really got to hear like uh what happened? Gauntlet three. Ga- Gauntlet three. My bad. What did I say? Gauntlet two. Yeah. Okay. Gauntlet three. What What happened uh, when you went home, like with the girlfriend? Um. I let's just say I left for what I thought was the right reason, uh, and the right reasons why I left. Um, I was told that you know there was a, you know there was a hard situation that needed to get taken care of, and you know you know she might not make it, and so I left thinking that was the that was the case. And, you know, let's just say I probably should have stayed because maybe I, maybe that wasn't, maybe that, maybe, maybe what I was told wasn't actually what happened. So I leading with my heart and not, you know, with my head, you know, may have cost me. So. Well, I mean, hindsight's always 20, 20, but um, if, I'm playing, if I'm playing devil's advocate here, you might've, uh, I don't want to say I don't want to use the word cost, but let's just say had you stayed, you might have been a challenge champion. Yeah, I know. But actually, hold on, I'm not even sure about that because it was they was definitely they they would have like the good guys who was that my, that team was on. They was gonna they was gonna try to big eat me. Right? They was gonna what they, what they like to call trim the fat because uh, they knew I was gonna have to run the final, and that was I'm not gonna lie, Gauntlet three was probably my worst shape. So you know, and honestly, and and you know. <laughs> And the good guys won on tech, technicality, so it was like I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it would have came down to if you could uh, be Big Easy at that point in time, which I mean, the bar would have been set pretty low, I guess. But yeah, you know, I, I, a Big Easy, they get people get Big Easy mess, man. Big Easy, Big Easy has shown that he can he can make shit happen. All right, Big Easy, Big Easy. I mean, Big Easy has a better elimination record than I do. You know, I mean, I think a lot of his shit was like. Shit that I would didn't get the opportunity to go like yeah man if you put me in a hall brawl situation and we doing the Oklahoma drill against someone like West yeah I'm probably gonna pick him up and run him through the bell too like it's West 
you know, West is a beast, but West is still 160 pounds at that time. You know, yeah, that was a that was a and that was a all in all football drill. Um, you know, I think I've said before, like uh, like uh, on and I think on X's. You know, I think we were me and Jasmine was put in a situation where it was supposed to be Jasmine to win that. And but it was it was a competition that, you know, they wouldn't have put anyone else that was my height in there. You know, they would never would have yeah. put Johnny in that kind of situation. They would have put CT in that situation, you know. So, I, you know, I don't know. It is what it is. Yeah. So uh, I want to kind of touch upon, lastly, since, you know, you're obviously a big boxing fan and also you come from this realm. What do you think about all the uh, latest um reality tv boxing events that they've had going on all these call outs what do you think they about pussy asses ain't gonna let me fight so until that happens i don't, I don't like you're not getting my money i keep seeing i keep seeing all these people who can't really box i, I saw the fights and it's there a lot of these people can't fight bro and it's it's trash bro it's trash man and bro i've called felsey out on you know i've called him out a couple times you know and honestly i don't have no ill will towards the guy but he said something along the lines of he can beat any big man in any kind of physical competition. And I'm telling you right now, I'll knock your thick ass the fuck out. You don't have the hands to deal with me, bro, at all. All right. I've seen your punching videos. I've seen your bag videos. And it's trash. Your technique is garbage. All right. You have no footwork. None. It's like you're like a juggernaut. To... It's horrible. Horrible. So he got a belt now. He has a legit championship belt rocking all talking about man, I'm the champ, man, I'm the man. Man, 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 man. Get the fuck out of here with that shit, bro. But you know, when it's all said and done, you know, I've hit up the reality nets for a day, bro. Put me in the ring, man. I'll fight anybody just to get that shit out of my system. You know, because I, you know, I'm I'm getting to an age where like I ain't gonna be able to do too much of this whole, you know, this whole combative sports shit too much longer, man. I'm I'm gonna have to be I'm gonna have to go from uh Leonardo to Master Splinter pretty soon, bro. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like my time is about done with that, man. So I mean, if that, if y'all watching it, put me in the goddamn ring. If not, then that's fine, you know. But you know, I'm gonna get something out of my system no matter what. But I, I feel, I feel like until like until one of these big guys beat me in a fight, bro, in a legitimate boxing match or kickboxing or Muay Thai or Taekwondo, I can do all four. Let me know. Until then, like, stop talking shit, bro. And I and you gotta and you gotta talk your shit. You got I know you gotta you gotta make yourself look as big as possible. You gotta make yourself look like a badass. I respect that. Like for example, he went out. I think Fessy went out and called out CT in one of the challenges. I respect that. I do. I do that. I do respect that. You gotta do what you gotta do. When you, I've never been to prison, but like from, I always I was always taught that if you gotta go to prison and you about to get fucked with, you gotta find the biggest motherfucker you can. You gotta knock his ass the fuck out. You gotta let him know you and not to be fucked with. All right. Yeah. That's it. That's in prison. That's in school. That's in whatever it is. And any kind of any one of those scenarios. So I respect, you know, dude going up and saying, hey, man, yo, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for the biggest dog here. CT and CT is the biggest dog. He's a motherfucking Terminator. So I respect that. But it's like, hey, bro, don't well, don't talk shit about like how how good your hands are. You ain't really fighting. And, and the only reason why you won is because the old boy had a dislocated shoulder. Bro, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit, bro. Come follow me in the ring, bro. I'm in the bay. I got. I got, we can meet up at Third Street Boxing. We can meet up at King's. We can meet up at the homie Rich's spot with the boxing ring. We can meet up at UFC Gym in the Octagon. I don't give a fuck. We can go ahead and throw these hands. All right. Now, if Darrell wants to fight, I'm going to go ahead and shut the fuck up a little bit because Darrell got hands, hands. All right. I got hands. I ain't got golden gloves hands. So I don't know if I can. I mean, I, I want to spar. I want to spar Darrell just to see how long I can last. No joke, just to see, just to see if the challenge. But I'm not going in that scenario thinking that man. I bust his nah, man. Darrell's gonna win that. He got hands. He got legit hands. So you know, I know, I know, you know, I know where where my confidence lies. I know where I know the confidence in my own abilities. Uh, but uh, you know, I also know not to talk tits to somebody. That's like you know, if Brock Lesnar pops up. If Brock Lesnar wants to fight, I'll fight Brock Lesnar. I don't expect to beat Brock Lesnar. I don't expect to do well against Brock Lesnar. It's Brock fucking Lesnar. You know what I mean? But with, with some of these other folks, bro, like man, come on with this tough guy shit, bro. A lot of that, a lot of this tough guy shit would get taken out. A lot of this full tough guy shit would be taken out. They let us fight on these shows, one hundred percent. They would yeah. be so. It was. It would be. And honestly, it would, it would. It would do better to, so they could stop seem like they're manufacturing drama. I think. Tina, I think. I think it was Tina that said that like the, like the challenges are start are going downhill because it's more focused on the challenges instead of the people and and all the drama is becoming like you know manufactured. It's like. You didn't. You don't have to do that. Just let people be around each other on the real. People and people's natural fucking state will come out. 
But, you know, all, all, I ain't got no problem with Fessman. All love to the guy. I hope he stays, remains successful. If he ever comes to the Bay and he wants to throw these hands, he knows I, I'm, I'm very, very easy to find. Very easy yeah, to find. I, I, think, I think that's uh, something we will want to manifest. No, I think a lot of fans would be up for that. You know what I'm saying? Give, give, him, so, give him someone that could uh, actually put his money where his mouth is. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying, man. And I'm not saying – and I don't know how old boy uh, – I don't know who that last opponent was. This guy's name is Ed or something like that. I don't know. But – you know, uh, he dislocated his shoulder. So, I mean, I'm thinking even if he didn't dislocate his shoulder, the the, the match would have been better. But it's like, hey, man, don't give a guy a title over default and have him running around talking about I'm the shit, bro. Like, come on, man. Come on with that shit. Yeah, no, that. No, pro- no progress has been made, though, towards uh, any fights? No, no. I've, I've, uh, I've hit him up. I hit him uh, asked him, hey, man, if y'all need somebody to get in the ring, you need a, uh, somebody heavier to get in the ring, let me know. I definitely want that belt from Fessy, but that's not, I mean, if that's not going to happen, I'm not going to keep on, you know, acting like I'm some kind of fiend for a fight. And I, ain't, I ain't got no, I don't got no ill will towards a guy like I, where I need to, I ain't Shannon, I ain't going to Shannon Briggs it, man. Like, I ain't got to do all that. At some point in time, man, whatever. If they, if they want me to, if they want me to fight, they'll give me a call. If not, then I'm going to do a smoker out here. I'm either going to do a Muay Thai amateur fight or I'm going to do a boxing amateur fight. And I'm just going to get it out of my system. But I'm punching someone in the face in the next couple months. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> They, they should implement like some like reality TV or just challenge based like fight pay per view. I mean, I know they have got this thing going on. It's called like celebrity net fights or whatever it's called, but like, yeah, it's not like the term celebrity is like pretty far fetched and stretched. <laughs> I'm got like, yeah, but, yeah, but I ain't no celebrity. I'm just I'm just a guy who, who every now and then wants to punch at people. That's all. No, like, I don't even know how they could like legit with a straight face call this a celebrity net fight when like i'm not even kidding like whoever's in the main event you've lined them up next to like madonna or something and it's like they're just another person that's just like walking the earth you know what i'm saying like crazy they could have called it always thought that no matter no matter what the level of reality tv that we are uh that no matter what level we are we're we're like we're not celebrities or we're not a list we're not b list we're not c list and we're not d list all right. I think one of the only real examples, or one of the prime, uh, one of the better examples um, of the exception of that would probably be Cardi B. You know, Cardi B started, you know, you know, loving hip hop, and now Cardi B is a household name. You know, you know, yeah. Miz started, Miz started in the real world. Now he's a multiple time WWE champion and one of the most reliable people uh, in the company. You know, Jamie started in the real world in the challenges, and now you know she's blinked from the X Men, and you can see her on. Um, Home, uh, was it? Uh, I just saw her on one show. It was a uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Or? No, no, no. It was a. Uh, it was. It was the. Ah, I forgot what it was. Um, but she's a powerful ass actor, bro. She really is. She's fantastic. She, she, she was in. Uh, she was in Grown Ups too. No, no, she was in Grown Ups, but she's in. She was in like this show. It was like um, under maybe it was Underground. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's that rings a bell. Yeah, but yeah, like no. she's a, no, she's an absolute fantastic actor, bro. She, man, she really is, bro. Yeah, you got a couple guys like Bananas is kind of you know creeping his way in there yeah, now. Yeah, but hold on. so here, here's the thing about Bananas and and that because like I would say and I don't know how to put this because I'm you know you know coming from a you know a no list celebrity here you know I can't really be ranking other people like that but you know like what I, even even with because uh, he has a show on NBC now called First Look right? Yeah. Okay, so you know. Like what level? What? How much higher would that be below? Uh, be above reality TV? But how much lower is that? Like below, say, like you know, Kevin Hart or, you know, or someone like that, or someone on the View. Like, is he on the same level as the people as the View? Because I don't really think so. No, probably not. Right. So it's like you know, I mean, he's making he's making strides. I think he's going to continue. I hope he continues. I really do. You know, I, I hope we I hope we see Johnny in the same light that we see these other that we see the Jamies and we see the Mike the Mizzes. I really do. All yeah. right. Um, if not for one, because anything that means it will keep him off the challenge. We. <laughs> 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 everybody, else, everybody else get a fair shot. It doesn't got to be a Johnny show. Um, but no, he's earned that man. He's earned he's earned every right to be at that level, and he's earned every right to be spoken in the way he's uh people speak about him man he really has and i'm you know wish yeah. him all the best yeah for sure well uh, i think we i think we scratched the surface on just about everything that uh maybe we didn't scratch on the first time uh thank you again for hopping on here you know i'm sure in the future if we ever need to uh talk about something we can do the same thing of course but um 
thanks again for uh, hopping on here. Hopefully in the future we could see you on either an All-Stars 4 potentially or a boxing fight of any kind. I know that's something movie. I would first. Movie. Love. Yeah, movie. Fight. I'm trying to fight The Rock in a movie. I'm trying to get my ass kicked. I want The Rock to throw me off a building. I've been, I, am a stu- I am a trained stuntman. I know how to fall. Yeah, and for no, sure. I'm not even joking. <laughs> that's where I'm trying to do like everything else, everything else is secondary, bro. Well, excuse me, I'm, that's not true. Being a father, fighting the Rock, <laughs> all right. Maybe do, doing a boxing match, you know, where I get to, you know, fight someone like Fessy. All stars. That's about about the same, man. But like, you know, I I definitely am appreciative of the opportunity. But there, I have bigger aspirations than you know trying to you know just get back on reality TV. Man, I'm trying to get. Honestly, I'm trying to get. A, if we really want to touch on it, man, I'm trying to get up with Mark. Uh, and his production company. I'm trying to get an opportunity. Maybe you get a chance to like tell a legitimate, so- a legitimate story about myself and like the shit I've gone through, bro. If you actually, bro, if you actually had a camera around with some of the fuckery that I've done over this last year and a half, it would make. I ain't gonna lie, bro. It was. I would be hated, loved, and but the ratings would be through the roof. There is so much shit. I gotta. I can tell you off camera, of course. I ain't gonna put all my business out there. My God. <laughs> I believe it. Man, I appreciate the opportunity, though, Mike. You know, it's always a good time get ch- catching up with you uh, in the official capacity. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. All right, man. Uh, take care. I'm going to have a pop up right above here um, at the once this is up to uh, link everybody to our original chat from, I believe, May of 2020, which is kind of fucking insane. Imagine that. The last time we did like a uh, official thing was May of 2020. That's like what? A legit like 16 months ago. Yeah, man. Yeah, so anything that wasn't talked about here was previously talked about. And uh, thanks again, man. Great, no, not a problem, great time. Bro. All right, man. Take care. Take care, buddy. Yeah.